12 things not to do in Edinburgh. Visit Edinburgh, a city that is a treasure trove of history and culture and is well worth the trip. The fact that it is so unique, though, also means that there are many chances for you to make a fool of yourself while going about it. When travelling to Edinburgh, the following are some of the most typical errors that tourists make. But don't worry, the worst thing that may happen to you as a result of making any of these blunders is catching a cold and perhaps getting some funny stares from the locals. However, being well prepared will not only make your trip to the Scottish capital more pleasurable, but can also save you a little bit of money and clear up some of the misunderstanding you may encounter there. 1. Putting in an order for a single malt whisky served over ice or even worse, with a Coca-Cola. It is easy to see why Scots are so proud of their whisky. A complicated beverage that is as refined as any French wine has been crafted by using generations worth of experience and years worth of maturing. If you ask for your single malt to be served on the rocks, a knowledgeable bartender will highly recommend that you drink it neat first, the way it was intended to be served, and if required, add a few drops of water to your glass. Those with less discernment will put the ice in the glass, but they will be evaluating you while they do so. If you spoil the flavour of a perfectly nice dram by adding coke to it, the grading will be that much more rigorous. 2. You shouldn't just drink whisky all the time. During your time in Edinburgh, you should definitely have a few drams of the water of life, but save the distillery tours for when you're in the highlands and islands. It's possible that this picture contains table chairs for restaurants, cafes and dining tables, furniture, chairs, wooden chamber and the interior. Gin is big in Edinburgh. It is reported that the city has the highest per capita consumption of gin in the whole United Kingdom. You may take a tour of the Edinburgh Gin Distillery and then go to the Heads and Tails pub for a drink afterward. Similarly, in the Summer Hall Arts Theatre's Dick's Bar, you can have Pickering's Gin, which is produced in the building next door, straight from the tap. The 56 North Gin stockpile is the most extensive in all of Scotland, including more than 170 individual bottles. 3. Ignoring the raincoat Even during the warmest months of the year, the weather in Scotland is famously unpredictable. It's been stated that whether the sky is clear or overcast, you shouldn't put too much stock in either one since you never know what the weather may bring. Even if you want to travel to Edinburgh in the middle of the summer, you should still bring a decent raincoat that is waterproof with you. Otherwise, you run the risk of being soaked. It is not worth your time to make an effort to control the situation using an umbrella since it will not hold up for long in the often strong gusts. 4. You should avoid shopping on the Royal Mile. Gaudy tourist retailers selling all the syrupy clichés of Scotland mar the mile-long path that connects the palace with Holyrood. Tartan, biscuit tins, as well as CU Jimmy hats that cause locals grimace. However, the route still manages to maintain its evocative medieval mood. Browse the wares in the shop that are handcrafted or antique. Armstrong & Sons has been in operation on the grass market since 1840. It is a treasure trove of historic clothing featuring kilts, cashmere and tweed, and it is heavily stocked with all of these items. The row of brightly coloured buildings that line the nearby Victoria Street is home to an interesting assortment of independently owned shops selling unique and interesting goods. Also close by is Candlemaker Row, which is an individual business owned by Hannah Zakari and specialising in handmade handcrafted goods. 5. Investing in the traditional tartan of your family it's not conventional, that's for sure. Quite a few stories boast on their websites that they carry the tartans of hundreds of distinct clans. However, this information is seldom verified. Regardless of how far away your house is from Scotland, there is almost always a tartan that has your family name somewhere on it. The truth is that only a tiny percentage of Highland tribes ever created their own distinctive pattern, and the majority of the remainder are really marketing inventions intended to boost product sales. In a related matter, making the decision to actually wear a kilt of that tartan throughout the town is… well, it's not strictly a mistake given an increasing number of young Edinburgh residents are doing so, but it is certainly courageous. These things are quite drafty and the weather in the city is not going to be good to you in any way. 6. Having insufficient preparation for the Edinburgh Festival Fringe Almost the whole of the month of August 
the Edinburgh Festival Fringe is one of the biggest cultural celebrations that can be found anywhere on the globe. August is not the best month to visit the city if you are hoping for a calm and uncomplicated vacation experience there during the summer. On the contrary, you should anticipate that the streets, hotels, public transportation, theatres and pubs will be crowded on the majority of days. What if you're planning to do exactly that when you get here? You will therefore need to mentally prepare yourself for the sheer magnitude of it. It is literally impossible for you to witness exactly all of it. Therefore, you will need to carefully choose the things that are most important to you. There might be more than 53,000 performances distributed over 300 locations. 7. Incorrectly pronouncing the names of locations No, it's not pronounced Edinburgh. There is no such thing as an Edinburgh pronunciation for the name of the city. It is pronounced Edinburgh, but if you speak it quickly enough, it may also be pronounced Edinburgh. Incorrectly answering this question is going to severely get on the nerves of the locals. In addition, there are a number of street names that tourists often get incorrect, which might contribute to some level of uncertainty when it comes to navigating the city. Cockburn is pronounced Coburn, while Buchluch is pronounced Buchlu. Princess Street is referred to as Princess Street, not Princess Street. 8. Misunderstanding the duration of the summer days and the long evenings of winter. When one is in a metropolitan area such as Edinburgh, it may be rather simple to forget how far up North Scotland truly is. It is not exactly within the Arctic Circle, but it is not all that far away from it either. In some regions of the nation, it is even possible to see the Aurora Borealis. In any case, the fact that we are located so far from the equator implies that the duration of the days varies greatly from one season to the next. In the summer, sunset may not occur until 10 p.m., while in the winter, it may not occur until 3.40 p.m. To put it another way, you shouldn't be shocked to see that stores are shutting, people are eating dinner, and the city's nightlife is starting a good deal earlier than it truly is dark. 9. Just going to the local watering holes they may be entertaining, but they are not considered local. Pubs are the finest places to meet people in Scotland, since Scots are known to be heavy drinkers. If you want to get to know the Scots, you should go to a bar. On the other hand, the businesses that are located on or near the primary attractions and roadways are mostly tourism joints, which Edinburgh locals tend to shun and avoid. They are also often quite busy, which means that it could be difficult for you to simply be served, much alone get a real sense of the local culture. Instead, go to the more intimate establishments tucked away on the less obvious side streets and keep an ear out for the sound of traditional Scottish folk music coming from inside. 10. Avoiding the usage of the buses. Not having the correct amount of change also. As there are a few different firms that provide this service, it is tempting to utilise the hop-on, hop-off buses to navigate about Edinburgh. On the other hand, Lothian buses, which are operated by the local municipal government, are undoubtedly of higher quality and cost much less. They even have a smartphone app that you can use to figure out which buses you need to board in order to go where you need to go. The one and only drawback is that you are required to have the correct change in order to purchase a ticket. Of course, walking around is an even more cost-effective option, but Edinburgh is known for its steep hills. It is essential that you investigate the bus service if you want to prevent being overtired. 11. Making an attempt to speak with a Scottish accent or asserting that you have Scottish ancestry when you don't. You wouldn't pretend to have a Chinese or Indian accent, so please don't attempt to sound like you're from Scotland. You'll make a fool of yourself and everyone else in the room if you do. Even the claim that one is just one sixteenth Scottish does not make it acceptable. In light of this, it is important to highlight that the massive amount of emigration that has occurred from Scotland over the course of the last several centuries has resulted in the fact that a large number of individuals may claim to be of Scottish ancestry. 12. Assaulting Greyfriars Bobby by rubbing his nose Greyfriars, you are not that fortunate. Bobby, a Sky Terrier, was so devoted to his master that for the last 14 years he has been sitting patiently at the owner's grave. In order to honour and remember this heartwarming tale of canine devotion, a monument was constructed in front of Greyfriars Kirk. Later, someone started the notion that stroking the nose of the statue would bring one good fortune. 
The residents have never thought this to be true, and they really find it somewhat annoying when visitors continue to rub the bronze statue in this manner, since it causes it to deteriorate. Edinburgh is full with must-do activities. Nonetheless, there is more to the Scottish city than just the obligatory tourist activities. While there is enough to do, there are also certain cautions to abide by. Some are due to misunderstandings of other cultures, some to simple carelessness, yet others to the simple stupidity of tourists. What not to do in Edinburgh is laid out for you in this video. If you avoid the mistakes we listed above, you'll have a fantastic experience in the city. Thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment and turn on the notification bell. This is Learning Canteen.